A frozen mummy is offering new insights into human history and geography. The Iceman, as he's known, has been the subject of scientific study since he was discovered in 1991. Beneath the ice of the Italian Alps, a man lay frozen for over 5,000 years. His skin, clothing, and even his final meal preserved. Known as Utsi the Iceman, he became one of the most studied human remains in history. They call him Utsi or the Iceman, found frozen in the Alps between Austria and Italy, preserved for some 5,300 years. But new high coverage DNA sequencing has shattered the familiar face. Nearly pure Anatolian farmer ancestry, no step DNA, dark skin, brown eyes, balding, and genetic affinities pointing toward Sardinia. His last meal, his copper ax, even the arrow that pierced his shoulder, now read like clues in a larger mystery. Who was he running from? Why was he on that ridge? And what does his genome reveal about the first Europeans we thought we knew? What scientists uncovered is cold, unsettling, and it's about to change the story of us. A new face for the Iceman. When scientists took another look at Utzi's DNA in 2023, they were not expecting to rewrite so much of what we thought we knew about him. Advances in sequencing technology allowed researchers to assemble a much higher quality genome than the one first produced back in 2012. This wasn't just a technical upgrade, it meant filtering out contamination from modern human DNA that had slipped into the original analysis and may have led to false conclusions about his ancestry and appearance. The new results paint a very different portrait. Gone are the light skin, light eyes, and steppe ancestry once attributed to him. In their place emerges a man with the darkest skin tone ever recorded in a contemporary European individual, deep brown eyes, and a genetic predisposition to male pattern baldness. His complexion was likely darker than that of modern Sicilians, and it turns out the brown coloration of his preserved skin is not simply a result of centuries in the ice. Microscopic melanin granules in his skin confirm that this was his natural color in life. This new genome also changes the story of where Utsi came from. The 2012 study suggested a genetic affinity with present-day Sardinians and the ancient herders of the Pontic Caspian steppe. But that theory created a puzzle. Those steppe herders did not arrive in Central Europe until roughly 400 years after Utsi's time. The updated research has now erased that connection entirely. Instead, about 90% of his genetic makeup came from early farmers who migrated from Anatolia around 8,000 years ago. These farming communities spread into Europe, mixing with local hunter-gatherers, but Utzi's lineage shows very little of that hunter-gatherer ancestry. This suggests his people lived in relative isolation in what is now South Tyrol, with limited contact beyond their community. Even his physical traits reveal a snapshot of human adaptation and progress. The genes for light skin tones, which help people in low sunlight regions produce enough vitamin D, did not become common in Europe until thousands of years after Utzi lived. In his era, dark skin was still prevalent among Europeans, reflecting the deep ancestral roots humanity shared with Africa. As for his hair, genetic markers show he was balding, although strands up to 9 centimeters long were found near his body, meaning he may have still retained some hair at the time of his death. He also carried genes linked to obesity and adult-onset diabetes, but his active lifestyle likely kept those conditions from ever developing. While these DNA findings deepen our understanding of his origins, they also add new layers to the mystery of his life and death. Discovered by hikers in 1991 in the Utztal Alps, Utzi was initially thought to have been frozen in place since the moment he died. For years, scientists imagined a dramatic final scene. The Iceman perhaps fleeing conflict, retreating high into the mountains late in the year, succumbing to the cold and being sealed into the glacier by a sudden climate shift. But newer archaeological studies challenge that idea. Analysis of plant remains, seeds, and even dung found near his body suggests that Utzi died in spring, not autumn, meaning his body may have been exposed during summers and recovered in ice multiple times over thousands of years. In fact, Evidence indicates he did not die in the small gully where his body was found. His belongings were scattered in ways that hint he died at a higher elevation, and seasonal meltwater or shifting ice carried him downslope. 
Rather than a single miraculous freeze preserving him in a perfect time capsule, it appears natural processes repeatedly revealed and reburied his remains. This also means Utzi's case may not be as unique as once believed. Archaeologists have since found other ancient human remains, tools, and artifacts emerging from melting ice across the world. With glaciers retreating under modern climate change, discoveries like his may become more common in the coming decades. Still, the details of Utzi's ancestry and the unusual isolation of his genetic line set him apart. He was a man standing at a crossroads in European prehistory, descended from some of the first farmers to reach the continent, living in a secluded mountain community, and meeting his end in circumstances that are still being unraveled. The renewed DNA evidence does not just give him a more accurate face, it deepens the enigma of the Iceman himself. And Utzi's story is just the beginning of a much wider ancient human mosaic. Ancient Faces Reimagined Across the world, breakthroughs in ancient DNA and archaeology have been steadily chipping away at our assumptions about how early humans looked, lived, and died. The story of Utzi is one piece of this puzzle, but he is joined by a striking cast of others whose remains have forced us to rethink the human past. These individuals are separated by thousands of miles and years, yet together they tell us that our modern mental picture of ancient people is often wrong. Take Cheddar Man, for example. Found deep inside Guff's cave in Britain in 1903, his skeleton dates back around 10,000 years to the Mesolithic period. For decades, he was imagined as pale-skinned, a kind of archetypal First Britain who might look familiar walking down a London street today. DNA analysis shattered that vision. Cheddar Man had dark skin, blue eyes, and was lactose intolerant. His world was a densely forested Britain still connected to mainland Europe, and his life revolved around hunting red deer and aurochs, fishing in rivers, and gathering seeds and nuts. That genetic combination of dark skin and light eyes challenges the long-held belief that Europeans rapidly evolved lighter complexions after arriving from Africa. The Yamnaya steppe herders tell a different story, one of sweeping migrations and cultural transformation. Originating in the grasslands of what is now Ukraine and Russia between about 3300 and 2600 BC, they were pioneers of horse riding, wagon transport, and metallurgy. Their language is believed to be the ancestor of hundreds of modern Indo-European languages. When the Yamnaya moved west into Europe about 5,000 years ago, they brought new technology, livestock, and ways of life, interbreeding with local populations and leaving a genetic legacy that still makes up a significant portion of many Europeans' ancestry. Their rise was not a quiet cultural blending, it was rapid, large-scale, and transformative. Yet discoveries like Utzi show that not everyone's genetic story was shaped by this migration. His DNA carried no trace of the Yamnaya, suggesting pockets of Europe remained genetically isolated even as vast waves of people were on the move elsewhere. In Northern Europe's bogs, a very different kind of preservation has revealed an unsettling human story. The bog bodies, such as Denmark's Tolland Man, are startling in their lifelike appearance, despite being over 2,000 years old. Acidic, oxygen-poor peat tanned their skin, preserved their hair, and sometimes even kept their last meals intact. These individuals often died violently, strangled, stabbed, bludgeoned, or a combination of all three. Many researchers believe they were ritual sacrifices, perhaps offerings to deities for fertility or good harvests, though other interpretations suggest punishment or execution. Far to the west, another ancient individual preserved by nature has added to this global picture. Inuk, a man from Greenland's Sakak culture about 4,000 years ago, was identified not through a complete skeleton, but from a tuft of hair found in permafrost. His genome revealed dark skin, brown eyes and thick dark hair, along with genetic traits adapted for Arctic survival. When considered together, these discoveries dismantle the idea of a single, uniform, ancient look or way of life. Dark-skinned Europeans like Cheddar Man, isolated mountain farmers like Otzi, nomadic herders like the Yamnaya, sacrificial victims of the northern bogs, and Arctic dwellers like Inuk confronts us with the reality that the faces of the past may be far more diverse and far more unexpected than the ones we imagine today. 
Together, they set the stage for a deeper truth about our shared human past. The Human Story, Written in Bone and Ice When you line up Otzi, Cheddarman, the Bog Bodies, Enoch, and the Yamnaya Herders, the differences are striking, but so is the bigger truth hiding behind them. The ancient world was not a quiet place where one way of life dominated for centuries. It was restless, filled with shifting borders, new arrivals, and people adapting to changing climates and threats. Human diversity then was not an exception. It was the rule. Skin tones, eye colors, body shapes, and genetic traits varied widely, even among neighbors who might have traded goods or shared hunting grounds. What also stands out is how fragile life was. There is no golden age of health hiding in the archaeological record. Many of these individuals bore the marks of disease, malnutrition, or injury. Some were cut down in conflict, others killed in rituals or punishments that seem alien to us now. Even far from cities or kingdoms, survival demanded constant work and sometimes ended with brutal suddenness. These were not idealized figures from storybooks. They were people who woke each morning to uncertainty. The power of modern DNA science is that it strips away our comforting guesses. It replaces familiar, tidy images with the unsettling reality of who our ancestors truly were. Step ancestry once linked to Otzi disappears under better testing. Cheddar Man's skin shifts from pale to dark in our reconstructions. Inuk's family tree jumps thousands of kilometers from where he was found. Every improvement in technology opens the door to another revelation that forces us to redraw the map of the human past. The greatest lesson is that our ancestors were never fixed types. They were fluid populations, constantly reshaped by migration, climate, alliances, and catastrophe. Communities could thrive for centuries and then vanish, leaving only a scattering of bones, artifacts, and now, fragments of DNA. What we see in the ancient record is not a straight march toward the present, but a kaleidoscope that changes each time we turn it. From a frozen hunter in the Alps to a blue-eyed forager in ancient Britain, from a sacrificed figure in a peat bog to a cold-adapted seal hunter in Greenland, the story becomes stranger and more varied the deeper we dig. And perhaps the most arresting thought is this. In the coded patterns of their DNA, in the injuries they carried, and in the resilience written across their lives. The line between their world and ours feels thinner than we ever imagined. From a frozen alpine past to cutting-edge genetic labs, Utzi's story shows how one discovery can transform our understanding of the past. What other secrets might still lie hidden in ancient DNA, waiting to be revealed? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe.